we get to look at a very rare sap today because these were never mass produced, always handmade by one or two people and yet popular enough to become kind of legendary within the lore of saps and blackjacks. These beasts, and they are beastly, were made by Robert Gonzalez of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, LASD. Mine's a 245. That's the model number one of four types that Mr. Gonzalez made with his partner. Well, I should say at least he had one partner, and I know that because I interviewed that person. Some of you already know this, so I'm going to make it brief. Here are the four types. This is, of course, from my book. See at the bottom left, basically the three types that were actively carried, commonly carried, in Southern California law enforcement circles were about a foot long and went from low to mid-20s in terms of ounces of weight and all the way up to 32 ounces. Again, of the three at the top of the list, or starting from the top of the list, those are the ones typically carried. And notice the lightest, weighing in at 23 ounces, was the most commonly used. So the 245, which we're looking at today, is a slightly bigger version of what was kind of the standard model, the 415. So this one goes about to 26 ounces. Here we're looking at a flanged mace, I mean a real one, right, in a museum that was meant to be used against armored opponents, opponents wearing steel armor, and it only weighs three pounds. Here's a Persian mace that weighs exactly two and a half pounds. Here on my channel, you might have seen my video on this Incan Empire copper silver mace head. That probably only weighed like a pound and a half and then add the weight of the wooden shaft. And that's why Gonzalez saps are just so strangely heavy for this weapons family, for the weapons family they're in. Remember, these are meant to be less than lethal clubs that fit in your pocket. And yet the Gonzalez 245 weighs two-thirds as much as the first mace that we saw, and four-fifths as much as the second. And probably weighs as much as this one here, you know, when it's fully assembled. So that's pretty insane. I mean, those are weapons of war. So Mr. Gonzalez, who started making these in about 1961, definitely went for mass as the deciding factor. Boy, look how thin, just flat-out skinny the grip looks compared to the striking head. You can imagine how top-heavy this feels because of that. Once you get this thing moving, it is really going to provide some pop. It's got that very long loop, which we've talked about in the past, used thusly, unless in the alternative manner that some Southern California law enforcement used, which I've shown in other videos. Let's go to some old, old-school documentation. A Buckheimer catalog from the 60s. Buckheimer, kind of the premier, most remembered sap maker from back in the day. So you'd have, they were leather makers, so you'd have holsters, all kinds of things, and then your page with your saps and jacks. The heaviest item on this whole page is 15 ounces, less than two-thirds in weight compared to the one we're looking at today which is why it hurts so much when I hit myself with it later in the video. 1986 Black Belt magazine that you've seen before. Remember the blackjack, it says. I know some of you have seen this before, so I'll be brief. Just notice how prevalent Gonzalez saps are in this article. And again, they were just a small regional thing. Visually, they show up six times in one magazine article. That's why I say in my book they have kind of this cult status. All because one officer in the very early 60s saw a couple of blackjacks get used in an incident and thought he could come up with a better design. Reminder, blackjacks with their small, cylindrical, hard-loaded head can definitely cause bleeding, so yeah, he witnessed a bloody mess. That's probably what led him towards creating these big, broad clubs. All of the Gonzalez designs have these broad, long, smooth striking surfaces. They're trying to use massive weight and concussive force to bring the person down. Here's a Buckheimer Texan, the big boy of old school flat saps. And you can see in that side-by-side -side comparison, it's going to have so much less behind it, at least in terms of the weight being brought to bear. Here's a more of a typical sized flat sap, a modern one, by Robert Garcia. And yeah, just completely dwarfed, of course. The typical flat saps are going to be lighter, faster, but deliver more of a smacking blow. Here's another vintage one, like our Texan, the Buckheimer 211, and yeah, it really looks tiny in comparison, right? And these are very similar items, these two, believe it or not. In terms of design, I've never noticed that before. Skinny shaft, 
The swelled oblong striking head stuffed with shot, but the smaller one counts on speed and springiness, whereas the latter, the one we're looking at, does not. Gonzalez saps are flexible in the shaft, but not in a way that's going to add power to your swing. Remember, if a shaft is flexible, but not too flexible, then the way to assist you is in reducing the shock to your hand upon impact and then theoretically that protects your target as well a little bit right diffuses the impact somewhat because these are meant to be less than lethal options for trying to subdue somebody if it's real flexible then it can be used to accelerate the strike so here it is just huge it's really heavy it's just like almost comically heavy in my hand for this type of weapon and you do not want to get hit with this thing. Speaking of that, and the swinging motion, and the flexibility, you can see by these stress marks here, this one was certainly carried, I would say, for a long time, and I would say used on occasion. Maybe more than occasionally, because you don't get marks like this from it just sitting in your pocket, not even for, you know, 10 years. Bob Gonzalez's partner told me that they did everything by hand. The sewing was with a sewing machine, but everything else was literally by hand, cutting the leather stuffing the head, wrapping it in the wet leather that then kind of shrinks to dry around it, all that good stuff. Check out how many layers of leather there are here, just way more than in a typical flat sap. Which, as a reminder, is what I technically classify these as. I mean, if you have to put them in some classification, uh, even though they're kind of shaped like a caveman's club. Uh, Bob's partner told me, by the way, that they would just sometimes collect expended shot from the shooting range uh, to make these. So, you know, like... Why buy some if you can just gather it up off the floor? Well, here it is in my pocket, and the main point here is that no, you cannot completely hide these the way you can with so many things out of this weapons group. A little demonstration on using the lanyard in the wraparound method to get this thing out. And I have no doubt this could disable a limb, numb a limb. So let's try some swinging. This is actually pretty awesome that I'm getting to swing a vintage Gonzalez. You could do a revolving door motion, of course, kind of blocking the incoming strike that's coming on your left side and hitting with your right. Notice that it wraps all the way around to my back. That's how much momentum it has. It's like swinging a pair of nunchaku, actually. And this thing is so hefty, it actually stressed my shoulder joint doing this kind of surprise uppercut. God. And that was the pain I was talking about earlier. My hand was, like, numb. Seriously, the one that I struck. So yeah, this thing, once it gets going, it really is like swinging a weapon of war. You know, I've talked multiple times about how these are technically soft saps, because they're filled with shot, but it's so tightly packed that that striking surface, that striking head is just, it might as well be a solid piece of steel, practically speaking. So yeah, I could break the back of the hand, break a wrist bone. This is not a pocket club to be taken lightly. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was really neat to, to get to handle a Gonzalez 245. It was thanks to Mike Brewster, who belongs to the same Facebook SAP Blackjack Impact Weapon type groups that I do. We worked out a trade. It was his idea for this and another Gonzalez, one that's even more rare than this one is. So I will show you that in a future video. Thanks for watching.